and gentlemen. It's good to see that so many of you have joined us today. Let's wait for about five minutes while the other guests dial in. We will begin shortly. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Reignite Cisco Security Umbrella Dual and SD WAN webinar, exclusively brought to you by Cisco and Ingram Micro Malaysia. I'm Kimberly, your host for today. Before we begin, here are some housekeeping announcements so that we can all enjoy a smooth session today. This webinar will run for about an hour with one presentation and a quiz where five participants will stand a chance to win 100 ringgit GrabFood e-voucher. We will share more about the quiz when the sessions arrive. If you have any questions throughout the session, you may post it via the chat box or Q&A anytime. Our speakers will attend to them. If you are disconnected from this live event, you can always redial in via the link stated in your confirmation or reminder email. Without further ado, I am pleased to invite Kelvin Lee, Technical Sales Engineer from Ingram Micro Malaysia to share his welcome note with us. Over to you, Kelvin. 
Hi, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, good morning. Okay, welcome for today's session. Uh. So, okay, uh, if you guys already ready, right? I see about approximate uh, 19 participants from here. Lah, huh? If you guys ready, can you guys put a ready in the chat? Can you guys put the ready in the chat? Right. So, okay, I can see some of you guys put it over here. Great. Okay. So today's session, uh, we will cover the Cisco Umbrella Dual and also SD WAN. Uh, just a little bit overview before we pass it to our expert to share more details with you guys, right? We always say that the we have to actually prepare more umbrella uh, for the rainy day, right? Agree or not? Uh? We have to prepare more umbrella because why suddenly rainy day without umbrella, then uh, we will actually get ourselves wet. Uh? So, okay. Uh, recently, you guys also see quite a lot of news outside there mentioned that the some of someone and someone, uh, their so-called bank account uh, has been actually transferred away, right? The money transferred away, right? Sometimes it's because of the so-called phishing issue. Lah, huh? uh, when you click on the particular link itself and it brings you to some anonymous uh, website, pretend to be someone, uh, pretend to be Maybank to you, right? So that uh, there's one cause you to put in your username and password inside there. Right? So this is the reason we require umbrella. Uh. Umbrella is not the actual umbrella we use during the re the rainy day, right? The umbrella is our Cisco umbrella, whereby can actually help us to protect all the phishing attacks. Uh. So later, my colleague Roger will share more with you. So again, that is the second topic we also covered about the Cisco uh, Cisco Duo, right? Okay, if you guys can see, uh, sometimes, time to time, we can see sometimes uh, we face something like our social media account being hacked, right? Because we don't have it, don't have the so-called uh, 2 MFA authentication. Uh. Sometimes company like yours, uh, your, your so-called social media account, you build a lot of followers, right? Your company uh, social media page have a lot of followers, but suddenly your account been hacked, right? Because of what? Because you don't have 2 MFA. Right, so you lost actually the whole the social media account is considered like your company asset as well, right? So you lost the whole asset. You when the time you try to do a dispute, right, to this all the social media company like Facebook or LinkedIn, you might have some issue from there lah, to do all the dispute. Same to our company application as well. If you don't, we don't have a two MFA, we only have single type of uh, authentication. Then it will actually cause quite a lot of uh, dangers for us lah. Huh? So here come our system do will help us on this lah. Huh? Again, later my colleague will share you how important our Cisco duo can help you, right? So the last one will be the topic is on this uh, SD WAN. Uh. So as we can see lah, huh, nowadays a lot of people actually request for flexi hours, right? I think Malaysia also implement this type of uh so-called policy, right? Some of the employee got allowed to request some flexi working hours from the employer. So a lot of us actually enjoy work from home. It brings actually a lot of benefit uh, for us. Lah, huh? For example, you don't need to travel. Every day you travel half an hour to office or half an hour back to home, you basically waste one hour already per day, right? So if you work from home, it's actually bring you a lot of benefit. You can actually save a lot of time and some even claim that they have better productivity, right? So from this, uh, when we say work from home, out from company office uh, network, so that's why we require uh, sd when to actually help us to do uh, the protection, right? So now, uh, again, uh, this will be the, the topic within our uh, today's session. So uh, without further ado, uh, uh, from as, as we can see, all these three um, types of product can actually help and help us in our battle to have to give us a better security uh. without further ado let me pass the floor uh, uh, to our uh, engineer Roger to help us to deliver share more details with us shortly right thank you Kelvin next let's welcome our speaker of the day Roger Wu technical sales engineer from Ingram Micro Malaysia for his presentation thanks Kimberly. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Roger, uh, basically the SE for CISO security. So I'll be just going through with you on the overview of the Stasi with uh, Umbrella, Dua, and of course the Maraki, right? So what is Stasi? So again, of course, according to Ghana, basically is the emerging of 
the combination of the your WAN and your of course the network security function, which will actually put it at the cloud, okay, instead of the traditional on-premise. Okay. So of course nowadays all the IT landscape have been changed. We have of course our remote uh, users, okay, working from home, and of course all our applications now are going to the cloud. Okay, so of course uh, we still do have some hybrid infrastructure where we still have some uh, servers in the data center. Okay, and of course we have our BYOD. All right, and of course nowadays there's a lot of IT devices. Okay, we have the, your smart TV. Okay, the sensors, uh, those uh, cameras, and of course uh, nowadays again everything is moving to the cloud. So of course we need to have the latest protection. Okay. So again, this is the normal traditional way where again you manage everything and control everything from your history. Okay, so all your configuration, you need to connect your VPN to go to internet, access your local app. But again, nowadays everything will still go to the internet. Okay, to access their 365 or their cloud application. So if everything is terminated back to your history, that's where you have all the bottleneck. So of course you will need to change the way that we have the uh, <clears throat> connectivity and of course the security. Okay, we will need to change it for on-prem to the cloud. Okay, so that's where the SASE will come in where we'll have a protection. Okay, no matter they are in branch, HQ or remote users. Okay, so everything will be managed from the cloud. Okay, so these are the components of uh, <coughs> SASE solution. So of course we need to have a general security. So this is where we protect your access to the internet. Okay, as you know, internet basically counts on the DNS. Okay, and of course, we do have the cloud firewall. All right. Uh, of course, the main feature is the secure web gateway. So this is our full web proxy in the cloud. Okay, we do have the CASB solution. Okay, so of course, we can protect your uh, cloud application like your 365. You can also have also enable the DLP. Okay, and of course, you need to have the remote access. So, of course, you need to have a secure connection back to your, your HQ, your data center, and of course, uh, the most important thing is, of course, the threat intel. So, you will need to have the latest threat protection. Okay. Uh, and of course, lastly, we do have this uh, Secure X platform. So, this again is our uh, XDR platform where we actually collect all the uh, logs and events from all our Cisco security products, and we can actually do some uh, uh, automation, and of course, we can actually do the uh, uh, blocking from our SecureX platform itself. So other than that, of course, you need to have the zero trust. Okay, so this way we will protect, like like Kevin mentioned, we will protect our credentials. Okay, so of course, we need to have a two FA. Okay, so when you access your application, you need to two FA. And of course, we need to have the device portrait have health check. Okay, so you'll make sure that the endpoint is protected and have the latest uh, health and of course the good posture. And of course, we need to leverage on the previous access. Okay, who can access the application? And continuous verification. So this is also important. So is that we will need to continuously uh, manage and of course monitor the endpoint. Okay. So, and of course, the last one is the behavior analytics. So this is more towards on to see any suspicious detection of the access. Okay, maybe uh, we can actually configure certain policies to keep track of how the user actually assess the uh, applications. Okay, and of course, the most important thing is the uh, access to your cloud applications. Okay, so of course, without any SD-WAN, Okay, or any umbrella, all your application will need to go through all the multiple service providers, okay, in order to access your cloud application. Okay, so of course, with our <coughs> Rocky and SD WAN, with our umbrella integration, we have a direct sharing. So basically, our umbrella and of course our SD WAN can straight away have a direct peer to your cloud application. So in this way, you will have actually a faster access to your cloud apps. Okay, so again, all of these we can actually manage from our uh, Marquee, uh console. Okay, and of course the umbrella. Okay, so from our part, basically, 
to force to deliver the exhaust stay, we were basically uh, proposed to have these murky uh, MX routers. Okay, so this will be the component part where we will have all the interconnectivity okay, for your internet access and of course the uh, VPN and SD WAN access between your branches and your HQ. And of course, the main component for SASE will be, of course, our six umbrella. So this is where we'll have the full uh, <coughs> internet access protection, okay, for your on premise and also for your roaming clients. All right. Okay, so there are two use cases for SASE. Okay, so of course, not everyone can to, uh, do the full SASE solution. Also, of course, we have two types, which is the secure remote worker and, of course, the secure edge. Okay, so for the secure remote worker, basically, it's just to protect your remote workers. So, again, of course, in order for them to connect to their applications, they will need to have the secure access. So, this again is where we will have our Cisco Duo to do all the 2FA and the <coughs> posture health check. And of course, our umbrella okay, to have the full DNS security, the full web uh, web gateway security, and of course, uh, the CASB if you want to have. And of course, the important thing is the meter mile optimization where you have the direct peering to your cloud apps. Okay, so these are all the solutions we have. So again, of course, you use Duo is more towards to protect your user uh credentials okay of course um this we can actually protect and of course uh we can use our any connect this is again for our connection back okay to uh the to your uh, on premise and of course uh, we will use any connect to be our cisco umbrella client okay so whether you're connected to vpn or your off vpn the any connect will basically protect you by using our umbrella roaming uh, agent and of course, uh, if you are using Office 365, of course, we do have solution like our Cloud Mabel's Defense is to protect your 365. So we, this way we can actually uh, first layer to basically drop all the phishing emails. Okay, and of course, most important thing, you need to have your secure endpoint okay, to basically protect your uh, endpoint okay, from those uh, viruses or ransomware. So for the secure edge, this is basically more towards on your network connectivity. So again, basically we will have our Cisco Meraki devices okay, to interconnect between your branches, his queues. Okay, so again, everything will be controlled by our uh, Meraki dashboard. This way you can have configure all your SD WAN. And again, for the security access, everything will be going through our Umbrella Cloud. So as mentioned, basically we will use our Murky MX uh, routers to be the main gateway for all your HQ and branches. And of course, we will use the umbrella uh, and connect and tool. Again, it's more towards on the authentication and of course the access to your apps. Right, so this is the normal flow for our access <coughs> app. So again, the modern thing we need to have your endpoint uh, protection. Okay, then of course, with our Cisco umbrella, we will protect for the DNS access. And of course, to access your cloud app, you will need to have the dual 2FA to validate okay, the user access. And of course, with our secure web gateway, of course, we can also protect if the user try to upload certain viruses or GLP, that's where we can actually also protect, right? And so this is basically how we have accessed our access application. Okay, so for on premise, okay, so we do have our so called VPNers, okay, this is where we use our dual network gateway. So this is act as a single sign on where we will publish our dual network gateway. So user do not need to have any VPN clients, okay. So again, user will just need to access the published website, they will authenticate using the 2FA, and that's where you can access your local web application or SSH and RDP straight from our dual. So you do not need any VPN. All right. So of course, for full phase VPN, of course, we do have, again, our Cisco AnyConnect. So this way we will have the uh, VPN uh, protection. Okay. And of course, Again, uh, normally we connect back to our Meraki, or maybe if you're using our ASA 5 Power, this is where you can actually have the secure 
access to your internet network okay, by using the dual 2FA. All right, so I'm going to go through the Marquee overview. So again, for Marquee, basically it's a fully cloud-based uh, platform okay, where basically we will manage all our Marquee devices through the <coughs> web, okay, through the API. Okay, so of course we have full security, okay, it's reliable, it's uh, <coughs> uh, reliable uh, 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 time. It's scalability, so again, of course, you can keep on adding your devices and of course, feature proofing. So again, if there's any new features, everything will be updated from the cloud, okay? So it's very simple, straightforward uh, <coughs> web-based GUI. So of course, you can have uh, zero touch provisioning, okay? Of course, we have the visibility. So of course, you can see all the detail of the user <coughs> application and device. Right, so of course the main feature, of course, it will be the <coughs> the so-called uh, <coughs> SD WAN. Okay, so of course, if those customers are still using MPLS, that will be actually quite expensive. So that's why we have this SD WAN, so that we can have multiple uh, WAN links to basically have the secure connection back to your branch and HQ. Okay, so of course nowadays we will tend to use the broadband. So of course this will be much higher speed and of course uh, lower cost. Okay. So for marking, we also do side to side auto VPN. So basically, we just need to click, okay, which uh, site you want to uh, connect to, and basically with three clicks, you are able to set up the VPN. Okay, so there's no need of creating of any policies, the side to side. Everything is just by uh, clicking okay, and selecting the sites. Okay, of course we have the full mesh and of course the hub and spoke. So again, it's simple, select whether you want to hub or spoke and then select the brush, that's about it. Okay, everything is set up for you. Right, so we do have the dual active uh, <coughs> VPN. So if any of the link fails, your VPN still goes through, okay? We do also support policy based routing. So where, of course, for critical business uh, application, okay, we basically maybe use the more stable line, maybe your MPLS or maybe the higher uh, <coughs> bandwidth line. And for those not critical, maybe you can use a lower bandwidth line okay, for the normal internet access. Okay. And also we support dynamic. Okay, so if in some cases, maybe the uh primary link they might have congestion, that it will automatically go to the second link. Okay, so all this we can actually configure from our market. Okay, so again, as mentioned, we do end to end. So we do have Wi-Fi, AP switches. Okay, so this is where we can basically uh, have the full visibility of your network. Okay, so for Umbrella, basically, again, this is our main component. So for Umbrella, we basically write the DNS layer security, okay, the full secure web gateway proxy, uh, cloud based firewall, and of course, the CASP. Okay, so of course, we do have additional things like a remote browser isolation. ADLP and of course the full uh, cloud malware detection for your file uploads and downloads. Okay. Right. So these are the full features that we have. So again, we have visibility on and off the network. So as I mentioned, once we install our any connect client with our Umbrella profile, whether you're on office or out of office, you will be monitored. Okay. So of course we will monitor all the internet traffic. Okay. You can see all the applications, the cloud applications that user actually has access. Okay, and of course, we do have the SSL description. So again, this is more tools on our full secure web gateway. Okay, so this will have the full HTTPS description. Okay, and of course, shadow IT. So again, we can actually see what application the user actually has been uh, accessing. And of course, we can also perform the DLP. All right, so these are all the features that we have. Okay, and of course, every of our telemetry will be sent back to our SecureX XDR platform. So from there, you can basically view all the events and basically also take uh, some response action. Okay. So for system block, basically we process okay, 620 billion requests per day, okay? Because basically we are running on one of the uh, largest DNS provider. Okay, so that's why we have full a lot of uh, requests, and as well, of course, we have final key uh, global customers. Okay, and of course, the important thing is the protection. Okay, basically, we can block 
in the 96% of the threads. Okay, so we do have peering. As I mentioned, we have peer with all the lead, the largest uh, telcos, and of course the cloud providers. Okay, so that's why, as mentioned, even though you point your DNS to our Umbrella Cloud, okay, we basically do the peering and basically your access to your cloud application is actually uh, faster. Okay. So we have 38 world data centers in the world. So basically, this is more towards on our sec uh, secure internet gateway where we have our IPsec tunnel to our umbrella data center. So this is where all the traffic will be routed through our data center. That's where we have the full uh, control where you can have your uh, cloud firewall and of course the secure gateway. So this is where we can actually do the peering to our the cloud applications also. Okay, so there are four types of licensing. Okay, we have the DNS essential advantage. So this is purely on a DNS uh, protection. And we have the SIG, which is security internet gateway, uh, essential, and of course the, uh, the advantage. So this is the full uh, secure web gateway that we have. All right, so the difference between the DNS and the SIG is again, for DNS is purely based on the domain uh, access, and of course, we go by uh, the category again, so that you won't see any URL filtering, filtering in the DNS uh, licensing. Okay, but for the DNS advantage, we do have some selective proxy where we can uh, enable to scan HTTPS traffic based on the so-called domain that is uh, suspicious or risky. Okay, so for the DNS initial, there is no HTTPS scanning. Okay, so it's pure based on domain asset. All right. So of course, as we can mention also, there's no antivirus scanning. Okay, for the DNS advantage. So for the full antivirus URL filtering, uh, and of course the full HTTPS, basically we will be going with the SIG. Okay, so of course SIG advantage will have the full license IPS DLP, and of course if you want to have the RBI. Okay. So DNS security is again very straightforward. As mentioned, all internet access, they will need to have a DNS uh, server or IP. So we just point our DNS to our Umbrella IP. All of your devices will be protected, okay? So that's why it's very straightforward to set up, install. So for the DNS security, again, we just based on the reputation of the domain. Okay, so if domain we deem as safe, it will be passed through. So if domain that is malicious, straight away we will block. Okay, and of course we do have some selective uh, <coughs> proxy we can do. So for, for those suspicious uh, domains, then of course we can have the HTTPS scanning. All right. So for our SIG, this is again our full task <coughs> uh, offering. So again, we do have the DNS security and then of course the cloud-based firewall. And of course the most important thing is the circuit web gateway. All right, and of course the KSP. So again, everything will be managed from a single console. Okay, so to set up the SIG is very straightforward. Basically, as mentioned, you need to have the VPN tunnel to our cloud. Okay, so this is where we will direct all the traffic to our umbrella cloud. Okay, so you have the full visibility and full protection. Okay. Then, of course, you can also use a pack file. And um, the most um, common that we will use is basically our AnyConnect client. Okay, so this will basically will protect the user, whether he's in the office or out of the office. Okay. So, setup, okay, for your office is restricted. All you need to do is just to point the DNS, okay, to our DNS IP. Okay, so of course, we will just Monitor and based on your public IP address, we can do the policy. Okay, so it's very straightforward. No need to change hardware or whatever, just change the DNS IP. That's it. Okay, so of course, uh, for the agent, it's very straightforward. Download, install the profile, and you're up and running. Okay, so for those customer who wants to go up to the user, then, of course, we will have our umbrella virtual appliance. So, this appliance will act as the DNS server. So, all the DNS 
uh, user request will go to our plans. So that's where we can track okay, the user, the IP. So from there, you can basically do policy based on IP on the user. Okay, so that's basically how easy to set up. Okay, so of course, the most important thing is our threat intelligence. So again, of course, we are using our CISO Talos. Okay, so basically, this is the largest threat intel organization on the planet. So basically, uh, we have 400 plus full time researchers and data uh, scientists. So we have 5 billion opportunity requests. Okay. 2 billion mouse samples seen daily. Okay, and of course, 5 billion category response and 2 million IP and URL blocks daily. So, okay, so they, they have the most comprehensive uh, uh, URL and of course, category base. Okay, so other vendors they might not have up to those uh, level of category and the URLs they can check. Okay, so this is how we basically. Uh, have all our latest protection. Okay, so basically they have their own uh, checking. Okay, they will basically monitor through all the DNS, the IP, okay, the full uh, call hash. This is basically their trade tell, and that's where they will come up with all the most important okay, protection against botnet, firmware, exploit, phishing, ransomware, spam, and fraud. Okay, so that's where we will update everything to Umbrella Cloud. So that's why. With Umbrella, it can also actually prevent okay, from those ransomware, okay, because straight away will block the request if they try to connect to their CNC. Okay, and of course, we have investigate. So investigate is basically for our Talos and Umbrella, we basically crawl all the websites. Okay, so we actually can do investigate on your customer domain or certain domains. You can actually have the full uh overview of what is your domain whether your domain has any uh vulnerabilities or not okay so of course our circuit access will be using our duo so again this is our 2fa solution okay so again straightforward install the app okay then of course uh once you have a 2fa we will do the direct push okay so these are the few methods we can do the authentication Okay, so of course, uh, normal push to your apps. We also have the software token, hardware token, SMS, uh, biometrics, okay, the UB key, and of course, the variables, right? So the only thing that we differentiate okay, between the other MFA solution, okay, we do support offline authentication, okay? So if your machine has no internet, okay, but you enable the 2FA, we are still able to do the offline mode, okay? So this is a very important feature, okay? So some MFA, if they mention, if your device have no internet connection, the 2FA will not work, all right? So for our dual, we support offline mode, okay? So again, all our dual, again, all cloud-based, so again, these are all the certification. Basically, we will meet compliance because we don't really uh, put in any so-called credentials from your local uh, uh, AD or domain or user directories. Okay, so basically we are fully compliant. Okay, so we have three type of licensing. Okay, the the dual MFA is the pure basic uh, MFA solution. So again, we just can enable the full uh, SSO. Okay, of course we can protect any applications. So. The most common one we use is the dual access. So again, this is, is will have an advanced policy uh, control. So you can do policy based on users, based on application, and we also have the device visibility and health check. Okay. And of course, go beyond this is the <coughs> highest uh, license we have. So again, this will have the option for your BYOD. Okay. So this one we will have is a trust endpoint. Okay, so again, uh, we can basically install our cert, okay, or basically to MDM, we can basically say that we will only trust your corporate endpoints. Okay, and of course we do have the dual network gateway, which is the uh, VPNs, uh, uh, so-called access okay, to your on-premise uh, web and of course association RDP. Okay. So we provide self enrollment. Okay, so basically user, when you enable the 2FA, so the users 
can do their own self enrollment. Okay, so it's very straightforward. Uh, they will need to download the application, then of course they can do their QR code scan, and basically they are able to provision their two FA. Okay, so again we have full visibility of their devices. Okay, and of course again the important thing is the posture check. Okay, check your device. Okay, whether is it uh, up to date or have the base of policy. Okay. And again, continuous inspection. All right. So again, uh, we will continue to check on your endpoint. So of course, if you're using our Cisco endpoint, if your endpoint has malware and we so-called isolate it, you are unable to assess your application. Okay, because we already have the quarantine. Okay, so we can go by user policies. So we can enable the geolocation. So if you try to assess, so this is where we can protect, okay, your users from the credential, uh, basically, if we can set that we can only allow the 2FA from Malaysia. So if someone try to assess your Office 365 outside of Malaysia, they are unable to authenticate. Okay, so basically we have uh, protection and policy. Okay, so again, we have device-based policy. Again, this is where we can say we can trust your endpoint. And of course, we can also do certain policy, okay? Okay, again, we can also monitor the accessories. So we can actually some sort like a behavior uh, monitoring. So you actually see uh, how is the user actually access your application, all right? So we can actually do a, a so-called AI uh, risk analysis based on the user, okay? So again, we provide a single sign-on page. So this way you can have a single sign-on. From there, you can access your applications, okay? Right, so we support most of the okay, the most common use case is of course the VPN. So we have the two FA for the VPN. Okay, of course, our cloud applications. Okay, we also support the same two application. So any application that supports the ML, we can actually integrate. Okay, we can also enable the property application. So of course we have our own SDK so that we can integrate your application. Okay, and of course, the SSH we also support. Okay, so I mentioned the dual giveaway is very straightforward. Basically, uh, this is our virtual appliance, okay, which will talk to our <coughs> similar authentication. And basically, we just need to publish okay, the domain. So, user will just need to assess the published domain name, and from there, they can assess the local application SSH and RDP. All right, so this is called our VPN uh, solution. Okay, so again, we can synchronize your user, okay, to of course the ready or your on-premise uh, AD server. Okay, so again, we basically do not uh, grab your password. Okay, it's just only the user and maybe the email, okay, or the phone. Okay, for of course for the uh, the process to so called create the uh, authentication, All right? So again, as mentioned, there is no password that will be sent to our dual cloud. Okay, so that's why it's very secure. Okay, and of course, lastly, our secure endpoint is again to protect your endpoint. All right, so again. Our endpoint, which is signified basically, is both is a uh, endpoint protection plus the EDR. Okay, so again, you will have our machine learning, we will be monitoring. Okay, so again, this is to protect the endpoints, okay, from all the malwares and ransomware. Okay, and of course, again, all the terminals will be sent back to our secure X. Okay, so from there, you can do respond actions. Right, so the last one will be the secure X, which is our XDR platform. So again, this is more towards to manage okay, all the <coughs> security solutions from Cisco. So, so if you have multiple security products like your email, your web, okay, your endpoint, then of course you need to okay to multiple console. Okay, but if you're using our Cisco security solutions, basically our Secure X will be able to see and monitor and manage all of the uh, solutions. Okay. So again, it's an API-based uh, <coughs> platform. So again, 
again, we are connecting to our security solutions to API. Okay, so we do not use a data lake. So of course, uh, basically we will have a direct access to the our security solution products. Okay, so again, as this uh, API platform, we are also able to integrate with the party uh, applications. Okay, your your ITSM, your SIM, we can actually also integrate. Okay, and of course, do some orchestration. Right, so the main features is, of course, the chat response. So, of course, this is where you can do investigation. All right, search for a particular IP hash file to see if any of your so called users okay, uh, actually have the access to that particular malicious uh, website or hash files. Okay, so from there, you can create your own action okay, to maybe block the IP, block the file, or maybe to isolate the endpoint. Okay. So again, everything is backed by our CISO Talos. So that's where we have the full latest uh, protection and of all the latest IOC okay, to protect, to actually detect any new uh, vulnerabilities and of course the uh, attacks. Okay. So of course, you also have your own uh, case management. Okay. So of course, you can also, this, this ribbon will be basically uh, attached to your browser. So you can basically uh, fiber between the uh, secure X and of course to your products. Okay, and of course, we also provide orchestration. So this way you can customize your so-called orchestration to drag and drop. And of course, some uh, uh, some slight uh, coding based on the co uh, integration to your application. Okay, so I will just go through the demo. So first thing, I will just go through on the Cisco Meraki. So again, for Cisco Meraki, basically everything's in the cloud. So you manage everything in the cloud. So all the device that is connected, you'll be able to see and manage, okay, from our uh, cloud dashboard. Okay, so for the ST WAN, it's very straightforward. So of course, we will have the side-to-side -side VPN. Okay, so side-to-side -side VPN is very straightforward. Okay, so all you need is to select. Okay, this is a spoke. I just want to connect to a hub. Okay, or you want to add another hub, you just select the hub. Okay, and that's it. It will configure the rest of the settings. Okay, because we already know all the other segments. Okay, from the other market devices. So there's only three clicks, and that's it. The the side to side panel is up. Okay. So, of course, we also have the ST WAN portion. Okay. So, this is where we can actually control the <coughs> traffic shipping. Okay. So, of course, you can do the priority of your links. Okay. You can have the active active load balancing. Okay. You can also do the policy. Okay. You can create okay, what type of protocols from where use which link. Okay. Can also have based on the VPN traffic, okay, what type of uh, uh, so-called traffic that you want to to use. Okay, you can also have the different preference. Okay, so if you want to extend your cloud application, so here again you can create your own rules. Okay, to see which link that is uh, the best. All right, so it's. Very straightforward. You can customize your own um, uh, configurations. And of course, you can also do traffic shaping. All right. So, based on what type of uh, uh, traffic or, or applications, you can do the traffic shaping. Okay. So, of course, uh, as mentioned, Meraki, we do also have our switches. Okay. We do have our wireless access points. So, all of this we can basically monitor and manage, okay? So again, for our, our access point, we can also have a direct integration with the umbrella, okay? So you have all the visibility of all the wireless, and of course, we also do have the MDM, okay? Yeah, so this is very straightforward for us to do the uh, st -WAN and of course, as mentioned, the cloud on RAM. So this will be the direct integration with our Cisco umbrella. 
Okay, so once this is done, okay, it will basically create the tunnel to our underclock. So that's where you can do the uh, uh, so-called SDWAN access to your cloud application. Okay, so for umbrella, it's very straightforward. Okay, so for deployment side, I mentioned we just monitor on your public IP address. So you just need to enter your public IP address. Okay, and from there, we can actually monitor. Okay. So, of course, we do have our roaming computers. Okay, so you just need to download okay, the any connect agent and, of course, the profile. That's where you can monitor the endpoints. Okay, so of course, we support uh, other mobile devices, Chromebooks. Okay, so of course, the tunnel is where uh, we can set up the tunnel to our web cloud. Okay, so for policies, as mentioned, for DNS protection, of course, we will basically have the normal uh, DNS settings where you will not have any HTTPS uh, decryption. Okay. Uh, and of course, the most important thing you will be basically blocking okay, based on the malware, new domain, website, CNC. So this is the main uh, so called category that we actually block. Okay. So, of course, for the web policy, our secret web gateway. So this, you will have additional settings, okay? We can basically go by schedule, okay? From what time to what time, uh, block, okay? You can also go by the destination of applications, okay? So we got 3,000 over applications, all right? So again, this is based on application, okay? Not, or not only browsers, okay? You know that, and of course, the categories, okay? So all of this is pretty much straightforward to um, deploy. Okay. So of course, in terms of reporting, okay, so of course you have the activities. We will show you all the latest detection. Okay. A Y Z block, which is the endpoint. So everything, all you can basically uh, manage and view from there. Okay. So of course, again, as mentioned. Everything we are also tied to our secret X. So from there, you can also uh, basically also query the what has been detected. Okay, you can actually do an investigation. Okay, this is to see whether what type of uh, is there any users that is accessing to that particular web page or website. Okay. Right, so if this is a managed endpoint, you can straight away uh, do some action okay, to isolate. So uh, it is depending on your orchestration. Okay, so what you can do, you can do your own uh, uh, orchestration, uh, maybe to, to basically quarantine the endpoint, all right, to isolate endpoint. And of course, if for this website, you can straight away block it, okay, block it to the Umbrella. So you don't have to go back to umbrella to create the policy. You can do it all from here. Okay. So that is more or less on the umbrella. It's really straightforward. Okay. So of course on the okay. So on the so so on the two FA portion. Okay. So it's very straightforward. Okay. So all we do is basically we have our dual push. So again. For this demo is basically we integrate with the 365. Okay, so once the user logs in to the 365, okay, they will get the to prompt. Okay, so we just need to approve it. Then, of course, if you want, you can trust the browser, then you'll be logged on. Okay, so it's very straightforward, very clean. Okay, so again, for those first endpoint. Okay, so this is where we can say we only allow certain corporate user laptops only. Okay, so they cannot log in okay, if they're using their own devices. Okay, so for the VPN, it's also very straightforward. Okay, so again, depending on your VPN, some support channel, and of course, the normal uh, VPN is using the radius. So you just open up your VPN client. Connect, enter using the password, and you get the dual push, and you're in. Okay, 
So for those users that want to protect their endpoints and also for RDP, okay, so they will install our agent. Okay, so once they want to log into the Windows or they want to do RDP, they will need to have the 2FA. And only they can access their servers or their desktop. Okay, so it's, that is the most common use over now where the administrator want to protect their servers. Okay, and of course the <coughs> the so-called uh, secure endpoint. So this is more towards, as mentioned, the integration with our Cisco uh, endpoint. So if the endpoint has been compromised straight away, it will be blocked. Okay. So what happens is that, oh, why is it blocked? So we just go to the reports. Okay. Why is it blocked? Is basically because it has been quarantined. Okay, so once we go back to the uh, our secure endpoint, we can see oh, why is it blocked. So here again, as I mentioned, it's an EDR, so you can see all the trajectory. Okay, where it goes to, and then once it's uh, detected, and once you clean up the machine, we can say as much as resolve. Then once it goes back to the application, it can log in. Okay. So again, we also provide passwordless. Okay, so you can use your your biometric scanner. So you need to enter in password also. All right. So we support pass, passwordless access also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um yeah. So basically, that is my <coughs> demo on the umbrella, and of course the duo, and of course the Meraki. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll just pass back to Kimberly. Thank you, Roger, for the insight you taken. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now entered the quiz session. Are you ready to win yourself a hundred ringgit GrabFood e voucher? You will need to scan this QR code to join Slido and complete the quiz. Remember, there will only be five winners, so you will have to be quick but also accurate. Just a reminder. Please enter your name as per ISVP so that we can identify you for the prize redemption. Do not put nickname, else we can't identify you if you are the winner. All right, ready? So just take out your phone, scan the QR code. Or you can. Um, I'll be inserting the link for you if you join using handphone. And you can click on the link. All right, so um, Kelvin will be the moderator for this quiz. Kelvin, you may share the Slido screen. Um, it with the QR code as well, so they can they can still join after you switch to your screen. Okay, let me share my screen. All right, if you guys can see the screen right now. Yeah, we can see. Okay, great. So this is just a warm up session first, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Just uh, share us what you learn from today. Right, I see some of you guys put in the Cisco security umbrella. Uh, some actually put in your name. La. I believe name will be the next screen. Right. So we have approximate uh, 23. Just now I see 23 participants from here. Right. At this moment, I only see 12 person attending the quiz. Right. So let's say if uh, just now, like Kimberly mentioned, we have five winner, right? So right now, depend uh, how many people join. Let's say all the participants join will be approximate 23% join. Then you guys have one fourth of the chances to win the prize, right? Right now, I have 16, right? Any more? Right? If just approximate 16, then we have uh, maybe one third of the chance to win, right? So anymore, want to join, just scan on the QR code or go to slido.com, put in the code 72859, 72859.
then you will be able to reach this page, right? So right now 16, I can see 16 person joining, right? If no further join, I will consider to start the quiz lah because we have just now we are a little bit late to start then we are a little bit overshoot of the time right we want to complete this as soon as possible right so we have 18 person okay now no more already let's uh, start our session uh. let me go on the next page okay to join your quiz i believe this page you require to put in your actual name like like just now kimberly mentioned uh follow your registration name right don't put in a nickname like superman uh, batman right later we don't know where to find you right okay let's see 13 person put in your name another three more right uh, 15 uh, to interrupt uh the screen may be too small you guys can zoom in using the uh, zoom function on top of the chat box uh, on top of the display okay thank you very much thing because just later the question will require you to actually use your eye huh? not only the focus that you listen just now what presentation by roger right later you will also require to spend your eye energy to find out the right question right answer and fastest and accurate right so right now 17 one more person right okay great let's start the game right now so first question, ah, first question, each of the question we have 30 seconds, right? Choose the best answer, the fastest and the accurate one will win, right? So this is just an emoji game, lah, ah, emoji game, right? So just look at the emoji, these three emoji, what is the right answer? Ah, it's a cross, it's an eye, it's some, it's some note reading something there. So let's see who is the winner, right? So we can see that uh 53% choosing cross eye scripting, right? Ah, uh, let's see what is the right answer. The right answer is cross side scripting, right? The first one, right? The twelve percent of people get the right answer. Let's see who is this twelve percent of people, right? Yes, we have Nick, Hafiz, Irene. Lim and Alice, the top five. Lah. So this is just the first question. We have another eight more to go, right? So let's see whether is this five person will maintain be the top five or not. Lah, or anyone will require to pick up the place from here. Let's go to the second one. Right? Second one, what is this? Is basically a fishing rod. Is a fish there? Right? what is your best answer from here right we have four uh, fishing 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 and fisherman right which is the right answer okay let's see what's your best answer right okay 84 percent mentioned is fishing right let's see the right answer yes the right answer is fishing you're right you guys are right so let's see who is the leaderboard right now i we can we have hafiz albert irene lim and li ming chung right okay great let's go to the third question right first question right a zero a calendar there right a zero and a calendar what is your best answer It's very tricky, but the answer will always relevant to the cyber security. Lah, huh? Right, so we have the answer. Uh, 47% choose zero day. Let's see. Yes, correct. The answer is zero day, right? 47% correct. So let's see who else. Uh, Half is still number one, right? Alice, Ken Yong, Grace, and uh, Idris Go, right? So, okay, this is the top five at this moment. Let's see, proceed to the question number four. Question number four, right? Some robot, 
and also I can see something like what the next one. I don't know. I when I first see this icon, I looks like a little bit like a bait lah for me, right? Looks like a bait, right? A bed frame, right? A robot with a bed frame, right? I don't know, right? This is what I see, right? How about you? What do you see? It's a name, it's a net, it's a bit, or it's a plug, right? Yes, 84% of you guys choose bot net. Yes, it's a net lah, it's a net. Right? So your right answer is bot net. Okay, let's go to question number five. Uh, we, before we go for question number five, the top five is Hafiz, Alice, Kenyon, Grace, and Theo, right? You can see some new name coming up lah, huh? right? Okay, next, let's go to the question number five. Question number five. Okay, we have four answers over here. Logic bomb, brain bomb, brain exploit, and logic circuit. Right. What is your best answer from here? We can see from the icon, there is a bomb, right? And there is a piece, something called brain. Okay, let's see what is your best answer, right? Uh, 37, choosing logic boom, right? Let's see what's the right answer. Yes, you are right. 37% having the right answer, right? Let's see the top five. Who else? Uh, Ken Yong pick up already, become number one. Theo, Hafiz, Lee Ming Chong, and Alice. Okay, let's go for question number six, right? Uh, what's your best answer? Obviously, we can see a key over there, and there is a book, something like a notebook. Uh, the book uh, Lima Lima Lima, lah, right? Uh, if you remember the old time, we have the small book. There is a 555 on top of it, right? I remember I have one last time, right? Okay, 55% uh, of you guys choose Keynote, right? Let's take a look. What is the right answer, right? The answer is Keylogger. 30% of you guys get the right answer, right? Let's go and take a look on who is the top five, right? Theo, Kenyong, Albert, Hafiz, and Li Ming Chung, right? Okay, this five person over here is very close already, eh? so make sure you guys are three more questions. Make sure you guys be the top five, right? So let's go for question number seven, right? Ah, question. Number seven, I can see an eye. I can see pointing up. You know, I can see an NS there as well. Right? Uh, what is your best answer? Okay, we have four questions. Four answers over here. NS look one. DNS look up. NS look up. And non-stop looking up. Uh, so, some, some people say the most panjang one is the right answer. Right? The most panjang one. Let's see how many of you guys choose. Uh, a lot of you guys choose NS lookup. Huh? Let's see. The answer is yes, NS lookup. Right. So let's see who is the top five right now. Right. We have Theo, Hafiz, Albert, Li Ming Chong, and Ken Yong. Right. Okay. Two more questions, huh? ladies and gentlemen. Two more questions to go. Right. So the next one is a question mark. And an emoji, a crying emoji over there. So what is your best answer? Why cry? Wanna cry? Wanna come? Want to cry? What is your best answer? Right, a question mark and a cry emoji. I believe this one, a lot of people should be getting the right one. Lah. Right. Okay, let's see. 65% say wanna cry. Okay, let's see. The right answer is correct. Wanna cry. 65%. This is actually quite a famous news lah previously, right? So, now we have Theo, Hafiz, Li Ming Chong, Ken Yong, and Lim Se Chun. Ah, Lim Se Chun is a new name from here, right? So now, I think we have the last question. Huh? So the last question will show who is the last five winner. Huh? So the 100 uh, ringgit uh, grab voucher will be belongs to the next leaderboard. Right? 
uh, next leaderboard. So the these five person are uh, make sure you guys are uh, hit the right answer and fastest and accuracy. Okay, let's go for the question number nine. Question number nine, right? What is your right answer? Right, a piece of uh, this piece of things I previously when I see it, I thought it's a moon, you know. I thought it's a moon, and also some uh, um, biohazard type of logo, lah, right? So, what's your best answer? We have four cookie poison, cookie hazard, cookies policy, and cookies toxic, right? Okay, 35% of you guys choose cookie hazard, right? Let's see. The answer is called cookie poison. Ah, cookie poison. Right? Fifteen percent of people correct. So let's see. Ah, who else? Who you guys think is the last five names from here? Right? We only have fifteen percent of the last question. Ah, so sometimes when you see this type of things, fifteen percent. Ah, the 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 name. Ah, all the name might be we suffer. You know. Ah, all with all the new names. Right? Let's take a look. Right? Who is the last five winner? Right. Ah, congratulations to Tio. We have Ken Yong, number two, Hafiz, number three, Li Ming Chong, number three, number four, and Wendy Wong, number five. Right. I think Wendy Wong just now, I never see the name. I'm not mistaken, it's a new name. La. Right. So, congratulations to all these uh, five winners. Right. Uh, remember, just put your name and your email address to the panelists, right? Just drop to them so at least they have another copy from there. Uh, we actually already have your name and also your email company name based on the name at you hear or at here. Lah, huh? So just uh, just take another precaution. Just put them a message over the chat box, right? Put in your name and your email so that we know who to contact. Lah, huh? So hope you guys enjoy this session. And uh, until next time, I pass back the uh, mic to the MC. Right. Back to Thank you, you Calvin. Thank you, Calvin. Great job, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to all our winners. We will get in touch with you soon on the prize redemption. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our webinar has come to the end. We shall end the session now. But before we end the session, let's welcome Ting Siu Wei business development consultant from Ingram Micro Malaysia to share with us his closing remarks. Over to you, Ting. Hi, morning. You guys can see my screen? I'll run this very fast. Uh, okay. So sorry. I'm, uh, guys, be safe. Watch on air all the time, guys. Uh, excuse me for my voice. So uh, I'm think I'm actually the, the last person standing between you and uh, leaving the, the campaign for today. So uh, now let not further ado, I would like to bring some attention to the team here and the, and the folks here. Uh, for those customers or resellers who are not on, who has not onboarded the Cisco partner portal, kindly do so. Because we need you to be registered in order to offer you big discount and also to offer you LOAs when you come to uh, uh, tenders RFQs, okay? So please do so. And the benefits of getting it on board to Cisco is that you can make use of the resources, the marketing collateral, and incentive. When you ask for bid, you need to be on the select scheme. The select scheme is a tier that Cisco emphasized and for the new partners or the existing partners, please we look into it and get yourself on today uh uh uh, can, uh onto the uh, tier all right so the certification you can also go on onto the uh, online certification like the jumper or the black belt okay for both sales and pre-sales these are very fantastic uh, knowledge uh information so task for the new I, I urge you to come on board and register yourself as a partner and for those existing please be reminded to come on board as a select tier we are paying for those who pass the select tier examination. We will rebate your company through CN. So take note of this, bring this home and talk to your managers. After this particular session, I'll send out a collateral over the email to all participants for you to share to your uh, uh, managers. All right, next. So we have spoken about umbrella. We have lengthy conversation about umbrella. Umbrella is on the cloud. Why is this so important? And over a while ago, I've been posting certain uh, URLs. You guys can take a look. 
data breach in Malaysia had been happening so rampant. And who cares? We have some authority and leadership says, no, it's just a small issue, no problem. Bro, that is not about big or small problem. It is about your credential and my credential and our clients, especially those VVIPs. What do we do about that? So this is the education I want you to bring home, take it on to the customer and have a word with them. If you are not ready, let us know. You'll come in and assist you even up to the demo and also POCs, all on us, okay? You don't need to do a single thing. So when you see a customer who has already the install base of firewall, trigger them. What are the next agenda of a firewall? How about the DNS? How about the duo? These are all beyond a normal traditional firewall, okay? So is it very difficult to do? No, it takes only five minutes. Trust me, it's only a five minute dingy things. So let bring this conversation to your customer and reignite them, especially the VVIPs, especially what had happened to Malaysia. Implied them with what current affair in Malaysia, data breach, 25 million records. And as of yesterday, we saw TikTok are actually taking data away. Why? And taking a tunnel back to the mainland China. Why? So these are all information are in the data breach taking. You can actually see it inside my link, which I just posted, which is a very nice demographic. All right. Take a look at that. So as I said just a while ago, when you come on to Umbrella, we also urge you to also master some skills. So please also jump on board yourself or your own company to have yourself trained under Fire Jumper, if not uh, Black Belt. This will enable you to take a, to, to have a feel and look and even your hands on to Umbrella. To be frank with you, after I completed these exercises, I myself can do the demo. I myself can do the investigation. The tools are there. It's not complicated. It's not NASA science. But we urge you to complete or to at least come on board and try on the training. Now, to further enhance the campaign today, we are throwing out three incentives. One, you bring on your customer, get them in the five or four. We come in and do a presentation just like this and a demo. We will pay you 200. Register with me your leads. I will, I, will, I will record it down and I'll pay you 200 with email as a proof or a webinar live screen capture as a proof. I will pay you back to your company over the CN. Second, if the customer agrees to take on, okay, thing, this thing warrant for a deal reg and being approved the deal reg, you need to be at least a select tier. So as I said at the beginning, the select tier is important when you submit a deal rush and get it approved. We will pay you additional 150. Therefore, without closing a deal, you are taking 350 home. Okay. And on top of that, itinerary number three, we are giving out when you buy three years, one year on us. That means you can charge customer three years, but one year subscription is on us. That means this is a campaign we are paying two plus one. Okay. Now, nevertheless, thing you have been talking so much about umbrella. What do I see from umbrella? What does the customer get from the umbrella? We will give you a POC. The POC can be turned on in five minutes and we'll leave the machine there or leave the setup there for 11 days or so to gather the behavior of your end user environment and we'll read out the report to you back to your end users. It will range from email. NetFlow, protocols, whatever had happened inside your environment for the past 11 days. On top of that, on top of that particular live report, I can support another complement report just based on domain name. You see, the whole while Mr. Roger has been saying DNS equal to the domain name, HTTP domain.com. What happened? What else can I collect from there? Actually, without asking permission, I can collect about nine categories of data gaps from the customer's domain, even your company and my company. I can table it out in a very nice report and complement to you for your customer to read out. These two reports are being given out for now, FOC for this particular campaign alone. Please come to me. All right. To complete the to complete today's conversation, 
I will be sending out an email collateral in details about what I've just spoken, 200, 150, buy two years, one year free on, on, on us, all right? This is the campaign we are shouting. So no worry about taking notes. I'll be sending out an email then after. So if there's any question, please drop me an email or my, or my, or my, or my teams an email. We'll be responding to you. Thank you. Kimberly, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Ting. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We hope you have found this session useful. Please feel free to contact the amazing Ingram team if you have any inquiries or if you need more information. Have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.